Hi everyone, it's Dee from My Particle Soaps and today I've got something a little bit different um, for you. It's still soaping related, kind of, uh, and it's still crafty, um, but over the last month or so I've not been very well and I haven't actually been well enough to make soap and post um, videos for you. So I thought, well, I would um, let you know what I have been doing while I've not been on my channel. So um, I found that I could have the energy to sit and watch all those lovely soaping videos um, and while I was doing that um, I could make some uh, soap savers. So um, in case you're not sure what a soap saver is, it's just a wee cotton, 100% cotton bag that you can pop a soap into. Um, this is one of my ugly soaps. Just put it. I just put in there just to to show you. Um, and um, what the what the soap saver does is that you can use it like a little washcloth. Suds up the soap under the shower, um, and um, use the little cotton bag as a, uh, a washcloth. Um, it's got a wee hand handle on it so that um, really good for older people or people who um, have trouble gripping things. Um, so if you drop the soap it only drops as far as your end of your wee handle, ha handle there um, and um, it gives you something to hang it up to so that the soap in the a little soap saver can dry out in between uses and it makes the soap last longer. You can also put in your little <coughs> excuse me, ends of soaps um, into the bag wee baggies um, so you're not wasting um, all those little bits and pieces of soaps that don't seem big enough to use for washing. I know I used to find those very frustrating and I've got a whole container of them sitting in my bathroom cupboard. Um, just waiting for you know a practical way to actually use them up um, and um, now I found one so I was really thrilled when I found the the idea of a, of a soap saver so um, I've been playing with some colors this is this blue one of course um, I bought some 100% cotton from a local crafting store it's the yellow orange purple so these are quite strong bold colours um, and I have found so I'm using one made out of this that initially the um, dye does run so I'll be giving these a hot wash um, and um, a press before um, giving them away as gifts um, also um, been um, having a look at um, some other different types of 100% cotton, but different colourways. I quite like these ones because they're multicoloured. Um, and so, like for this, for example, this is a um, this particular one here produces that little baggy. Um, and this one here uses this one. And another thing I, I like about these ones too is that every time you make one it's going to be a little bit different because of the way the, 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 the colour graduations go with um, over the length of the yarn. Um, every bag is going to look a little bit different. So you've got some nice variety to choose from. So this is just 100% cotton 8 ply um, that I'm using here. This is one of my favourites, it's quite pretty. It's sort of like um, you got your, your teal and your pinks and your cream and a, a nice soft muted grey that looks almost mauve. Um, here's another one of my favourites. Hard to believe that that ball of cotton produced those colourways because I've used all those colours up in the, in the ball. So that's what that one is. Something a nice a little bit nice, not more neutral with the nice lemons and light green 
a little bit of pink thrown in. This one's probably what I would consider more masculine, so it's got greys and creams um, inside it. Um, and this one here also has got the lemons and the greens, but it's got uh, oranges and purples in it as well. Um, I'm doing a, a black one at the moment um, that um, it's probably <laughs> too dark to show you actually how to do, do it on this one so um, I'm just going to take my needle out of there on my hook um, and I'll show you exactly um, how I do it so um, for that I will bring you in a little bit closer if you just bear with me uh, well, I changed the camera so this is just a uh, four millimeter oh, sorry four milliliter millimeter hook I'm sorry I don't know what size that is in, is it an imperial um, and an 8 ply 100% cotton um, and they're really simple to make um, you just start off at the bottom of the bag <coughs> and do a chain stitch um, and then we start doing double crochets into the chain to form the foundation of the bag. chain that the, the, this loops come out of you want to go to the one next to that and just grab a single piece of chain there and do a double crochet and then once that's completed you go into the next single loop so through it over through once and then over again and through twice and that's your double crochet and that's the double crochet is the main stitch for the whole soap saver So I'm not going to bore you with um, you watching me make the whole thing. I'll just show you in stages. Um, throughout, because I'm sure you don't want to be sitting watching me for an hour crocheting up a little crochet baggie. Once you get to the end of the chain, um, you just do a, a single chain stitch um, and then you start in on the other side of the chain and find that single loop. And sometimes you've got to coax your hook into it with your nail like I'm doing here. do the same just down the other side. Now with this end here I like to actually um, crochet it in just to make it nice and neat. So what I do is um, I grab it over my loop finger. I don't use it to loop but 
it gets tucked in. You can see that. Show you, oh, show you there. It gets tucked in to the one that I am looping. And then when I go to do the second part of the double chain, I'm looping over it again. And that holds it down along the along that bottom seam. So you don't have to worry about it hanging out in the breeze or it um, it fraying. I'll show you that again. So I'm going through the left chain, the foundation chain. putting it over my needle but I'm not so that's the that's the tail this is the actual working yarn through there and then bring that working chain tight over there and I just keep doing that to the end of the foundation Row. Right. Well, I've been crocheting now. Oof. I'm too scared to say how long I've been crocheting now. <laughs> I started crocheting but at about oh, eight or nine years old. Um, I used to crochet little tops and clothes for my dollies um, <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was <laughs> but it's more than 40 years ago so. I also knit as well but um, My mother-in-law was a, an avid knitter um, and <laughs> she used to knit for, for shops and things and um, it was just easier just to ask mum to do it. Um, I mean, I, you know, I like, like small projects like for the... Um, like for kids, you know, kids things and dollies and what have you did for the kids, but um, you know, like adult size, you know, jumpers for my hubby and the family um, and stuff like that. It was just so much easier just to to ask mum to knit up a pattern, just buy the wool and buy the pattern, and, and away she'd go. Um, I'm pleased to. Pleased to say that um, my eldest daughter Emma, she's got the, the knitting bug from my grandma, who's uh, not with us anymore. Right, I'm at the end here, do a, um, a chain stitch, and what I'm going to do now is is just a simple slip stitch at the other end on the other side. And that gives an, a, that end piece a bit of a letter if I can get through this the splitting. A nice finish to the edge to that foundation row before I start doing the rest of it. Alright, so there's the foundation row. Put the chain down the middle. Oops, sorry, let's get that on camera, shall we? Got the chain down the middle, and then you've got your first foundation row of your double crochets. Here's the end of that wee tail that we've crocheted in, and 
just to save it from annoying me, I'm going to snip it off. And that's all good. So you don't have to go back later and sew it in. It's already, it's already been crocheted in. Right, so for the next row, what you do is that you can see on top of your double notch, you've got sort of like a double loop. So you want to go through both of those on each stitch and just do your double crochet. Now the, the trickiest part of this is actually just setting that foundation row and then after that you've got your tension right it just crochets up What was I saying? Oh, that's right. I was talking about Em's. Yes. Em's, um, not only does she knit, um, but she buys wool in the raw and she spins it and she dyes it and then she knits and crochets items. At the moment she's doing um, what they call a crescent shawl. Um, it's done with a very fine wool. Um, so it's almost lace weight. Um, and she's doing one for um, a friend of her grandmother's who's sort of adopted the kids as a the grandchildren after because his mum died and um, so she's making one of those at the moment but yeah she's taught herself how to to um, spin um, watching YouTube videos um, we picked up uh, second hand wheel through Trade Me, which is a um, sort of like a buy, buy sell exchange site here in New Zealand. Um, and then we were at the dump shop, which is well, it's not called the dump shop, it's called the eco shop, but it's where you know, like recyclables or reusables go to that you can buy that have been dumped. Um, and they resell it to recoup some of the losses um, and to recycle and she found one there which was really reasonable because she'd been looking online for similar ones um, made by a local producer um, who makes spinning wheels that are sold the world over and she managed to pick up this one second hand. Um, and then it needed a little bit of tender love and care to get it back up and running. But um, here it, Chris did that. Um, and yeah, she's just forever on her spinning wheel. And if she's not on her spinning wheel, she's on a pair of needles. So it's nice at that. that Handcrafting legacy has carried on for yet another generation. So there we go, I've gone around there twice now. And what you do is you just keep going round and round and round to eventually you end up with this. I'll show you, there's no seams there. It's just crocheted all around. No seams. That's an awesome wee pattern. Um, and um, 
and then when you get I sort of crochet up I think it's about 20 rows or about 10 centimeters from the bottom and then I do a, a row of trebles um, and, um, and then a final row of double crochets um, and the row of trebles act as my ribbon casing so I can thread it through um, and then it's a chain of 30 length, um, thread it through, knot it, that's the knot for this one, put the knot on the inside, and then you've got your, oh, let's bring that back, then you've got your cotton slope slaver. So I'll work on this a little bit more off camera, and then um, I will show you the next step. Be back in a tick. Welcome back. So I've done a few more rows now, so there's the bottom. What you can see there is actually the inside of the soap saver. Um, what I didn't say earlier was that I find it easiest to actually um, start um, the, the bottom of the soap saver um, basically working inside out so the, the side toward you is the actual front or the outward facing um, side of your work for your double crochet um, and the side away from you is the back side or the reverse side or um, the side that you don't want I mean, I mean you could um, do it that way around if you like um, I don't know if you can tell it's similar it, it does look similar um, but it, generally speaking the side facing you is actually going to be the side that's the, the good side of the work. Um, but I find working like this, while you're setting those sort of foundation rows, what have we got there, one, two, three, four, five, first six rows, what have you. And then when it looks like, because we remember it started out being flat, and you're working around, and then it starts coming in and, and form that shape, that little boat shape. Um, you just turn it inside out and then you, now you're working with the right side out um, and um, and you just keep working around I just find that if you work with it tucked in around the other way while well you're just setting that first inch or so it just makes it a little bit easier um, until you've got that little boat shape in your work and then um, you'll just continue working it like this going around the outside
baby from being bored to tears again and I'm going to turn the camera off um, and come back when I'm uh, up to this part of the soap sailor which is going into doing the trebles for the um, last place rope ribbon um, casing of the soap sailor welcome back um, I've done my 20 or so rows now so we're at um, 10 centimeters um, so when you know you've completed um, a full row is that the two sides will be even um, so to start the um, the treble row we're going to do three chain Now for a treble we wrap around the hook first, then we go like with the double crochets into the work, hook one through, so that's your one, and then you hook through and do just two, and then your third is your treble. So we're in the middle. So we're getting to the end of the row now. So you've got that last one, that last <coughs> double crochet we did there, and then the three chain. So we want to go into that one there. And although it's tempting to go into that one there at the base, we won't. What we'll do is just we'll do a, a slip stitch. So a slip stitch is just basically putting the needle through and slipping the yarn back through to the, so to say, uh, uh, uttermost loop. And then we go and join that row together. So now all we need to do is um, the last row of double crochet.
Okay, sorry about that. Um, I just had to uh, change out the battery. So to, to, to finish off the work, you do a, a slip stitch through the bottom of the row and then another slip stitch and then we cut off our lengths. Now you need, need to leave um, enough to do a sole on the end, just tidy things up. Um, and then we just pull that through to make a knot and then what I'll do later is sew that in around the top edge and that keeps that all nice and neat and tidy. So the drawstring is really easy. Just a simple chain, and I sort of make mine about 60 to 70 uh, chains. Now, because I've got a count, it's fine. Um, I'll probably speed through this, so um, rather than you just watch me. Um, sit here silently chaining um, so we'll see you when we get to the end saying before we were so rudely interrupted I um, measured the um, drawstring sort of against the, the bag and sort of make it three times the width of the bag with a little bit more just to allow for the um, knot so I'm going to do an extra five I actually like to, when I do my tie up, I like to actually include the very end of the chain um, inside the knot just to, it seems to hold better. So that's the last one. So uh, what I do is I go to the opposite end of where we did the three chain and I start th th threading through the end of the needle through the casing. Straight and just draw it through. Okay, back after being rudely interrupted again. Um, I, I've got the, the phone on answer, but um, whoever's calling is not leaving a message. Um, they'll get back to us. Okay, so we'll just continue threading that through.
time of leaves. I'm gonna go back in this bit. And we just pull the knot through on the other side. pop your wee soap in there. Um, I'll sew that in on the top. Well, these ones I've made a little bit tighter and firmer than the first ones because it's just an experiment when I started out. But that's a Full cake of soap. Pull the jawstring over the wrist, and you're ready for your shower. Anyway, that's basically what I've been doing while I haven't been making soap. I've not been well, um, and I thought I would share it with you. So hopefully, soon we'll have a. Um, I'm starting to feel better now um, and I've got some soaps that I really need to make um, <clears throat> um, so we'll have another soaping for there for you real soon thanks for watching and bye for now